So hello and welcome. Hello and welcome everybody in the audience um, to today's session um, as a prequel to the Data Lift Summit that is being held in June in Berlin. Uh, my name is Chris, Chris Armbruster. I'm the Director Data Career at the AI Guild. And with me today is Alexandra, Alexandra Kovacev, who is a Data Science Manager at Delivery Hero. Today's title is Taxonomy and Catalog of the World's Food Culture. So we'll be hearing something about food in connection to data and also to cataloging it. So hello and welcome, Alexandra. Hi, hi, Chris. Hi to the audience. Yeah, I'm happy to be here and talk about our work. Thank you. Just before we actually talk our work, I would like to go back a bit. So you're a data science manager now. That suggests that you have been in the field for quite a while because one needs to work to get there. So how did you get started? What was your initial interest in data? Yeah, so I think since university, I was quite um, interested in more the theoretical part of the engineering, computer engineering, like machine learning, and did my master's and a PhD towards the topic of like uh, bioinformatics, but also complex networks. And even starting then, when I think now back, I was working with uh, food-related data, like flavor networks, to be more precise which triggered also like my interest in, in food and different types of uh, dishes that we consume, but they're also their connection with uh, drugs, for example. And I wanted really to work in the bioinformatics field, but moving to Berlin, unfortunately, there were not too many opportunities. I was working also like um, in a small a startup company that was doing some interesting um, projects, but the company was small. So then I had a chance to move to Delivery Hero and work in the recommendations and ranking team in uh, the Discovery Tribe. And there uh, I was for three years as a senior data scientist, but we like we touched our limits with different recommendations that we were providing for our platforms, like restaurants, but also quick commerce and shops, by not really knowing what is the preference or what is what does the product that we recommend, what is the taste of the product, what is the the type of the product. We were just looking into like product IDs, maybe sometimes embeddings, but not really um, helping. So I pushed forward to really um, basically the shipper like uh, entangle the, the information of the products and build a team uh, that will work on this topic of, um, we call it food science or <laughs> uh, the bigger scope that uh, will de deliver to our customers and to our business um, the information about the, the products. So, yeah, I, I like to call it also <laughs> as my baby project. So it's really, really, uh, I'm really passionate about. Thank you for that, Alexandra. So so it, it's your project driving something forward. Yes. Um, let's let's, let's um, envision it a bit more for the audience. So, I mean, I guess we all go to restaurants perhaps not as much in the last two years as we would have liked to, but we will again. And we all know that, you know, we're looking at a menu, we're trying to order dishes. Perhaps we have favorite dishes for a favorite type of restaurant. So we have kind of like recommendations for ourselves, if you so like, or we ask somebody else to do this. So actually, we're all familiar with the situation. And of course, with Delivery Hero, you're ordering food on an app um, and it, it, gets, it, it gets delivered to you. And of course, you, you know, it would be nice if you could make recommendations for me while I'm ordering to understand this. So what, what's the particular issue there in, in providing recommendations? Yeah, the particular issue is that, for example, Deliver Hero is a company that, that usually buys uh, other small companies around the world. So we don't own the, the core or the platform itself, but we, we try to uh, unify the data that we are getting. So for now, all the, the information that we get up for the products from the restaurant is like a free text data like that is inserted by the by the restaurant itself and all these products will have their own unique product ideas and just like a simple example that i will give it's the like even in mcdonald's uh, mcburger mcchicken burger will have unique id in every restaurant that we have in our database and we are there is no way that we can fi figure out from the database that this is the same product across all McDonald's restaurants or even for a Coca-Cola. So therefore, like when we look uh, or we try like, for example, matrix factorization on a product level, because you ideally would like to recommend a product to the customer, not only the restaurant itself, um, the search space becomes huge because we have millions, millions of products, like 52 millions of products that we will have in our 
in our database um, and to match to these to millions of, of customers that we have. So this is not possible. Um, and on, only looking into the product like this, you are not able to understand, oh, is this customer prefers eating, I don't know, salads or burgers or pizzas or some desserts. Uh, so this is our main, uh, main goal, like basically finding out what is the preference, the real preference, the taste of the customer. Yeah. So how do you go about that, so finding out my real preference or that of somebody else? Yeah, so uh, the idea is first to clean up the data, <laughs> to <laughs> basically transform the data, to figure out what each product is, what kind of um, dish, we call it dish type is. So if, if this is a chicken burger, if this is a beef burger, if this is some flavored uh, type of tea or Coca-Cola. The most interesting uh, thing I would say about the, the challenge is that Delivery Hero doesn't operate only in one country, for example, Europe, where, or, where you're familiar also with the dishes uh, when you look at them. We operate in more than 50 countries, and this ranging, ranging from um, Asia, like uh, Philippines, Malaysia, Taiwan, Hong Kong, but also uh, so MENA, like uh, I think Kuwait, Dubai, Egypt, and then also um, Sweden, uh, Hungary, but also in South Asia, <laughs> Uruguay, Argentina. So you can imagine. So I want to think about our data that basically we have the knowledge about the food consumption for the world, <laughs> what the customers around the world, what they prefer, what they combine together, what they order. And additionally, sometimes this data is not is also not always in English language. So uh, it will be present only in local language. The product name will be very cuisine and country specific. Um, so uh, we take this challenge, we dissect it step by step by combining, like looking into product information from a couple of countries, then solving the problem for them, then adding another country or another a cuisine, let's say world cuisine, solving it from them and, and so on. <laughs> Actually, this takes me forward um, to to the Data Lift Summit in June and and the use case that we were presenting around dish catalog optimization from unstructured to knowledge graph. And you've actually been speaking about the part of the data, um, and and laying out that you know that it's 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 very global, very diverse. Lots of it is unique. You mentioned that you have more than fifty million products. Um, uh, yeah. that that people can actually order not 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 everybody in all countries all 50 million yes, but yeah. on the global <laughs> scope that that's what you're looking yeah. at so unstructured data what are you doing there what kind of tools or technologies are you you using to get a handle on this yes so exactly when i say unstructured data i mean mostly about the text information that every restaurant inputs for the product this is in the form of product name and can be something like premium and you have to figure out by other parameters of this product what exactly this is and then you have menu category for example can be cake some description sometimes is useful some sometimes not because sometimes it can be like a, a best value or like a recommendation and sometimes might have some taste or ingredients information but on, not always and then also image um, Images are also not always present, like 50% of the time, but when they're present, they are also quite informative um, into uh, figuring, like helping us to figure out which products are same or, or very similar or dissimilar. So we, uh, when I say unstructured, I think about the text and uh, image data and mostly uh, figuring out or um, extracting uh, features from this information. And, um, when we look into the features, we we can define multiple times types of uh, features that we have we can explore on the product level. This is what I say, for example, the dish type, um, like a beef burger or just burger, but also the meal type. Is this a dinner? Is this a main dish? Is this a drink? And um, then also dietary types, which is really really important for like for the customers. Like, is this vegetarian, vegan, uh, low carb, and so on. But sometimes pieces, size, right? Quantity. Is it two, two pieces, three pieces, 200 milliliters, and so on? Yeah. 
Okay, so so you have this data. And the other part here says dish catalog optimization. Actually, you were now talking about the dish catalog. You were talking about yes. similarities, dissimilarities, grouping it. So there's this word optimization here. What does that then mean? Yeah. Optimization means basically um, transforming this huge space of dishes that we have of product IDs to a much smaller uh, space. For example, this means that we would like to bring, um, I don't know, one million of products that we have for a couple of countries into a level of dish taxonomy that will have only 1,000, uh, we call them nor normalized dishes, norm dishes. So the idea is there that uh, we build a classifier, right, that will be able to um, classify all the products that we have in our uh, data catalog into this taxonomy, dish taxonomy that we are building. And now when other teams are using our data, they are basically able to write to use this decreased, <laughs> optimized <laughs> dish catalog and uh, explore much, much more, uh, much, like use it in machine learning models, use it in dashboarding and so on. I have a follow-up question for you yeah. <laughs> um, uh, relating to the data cleanup challenge. Um, yes, that I also can imagine as enormous. Um, do you have a food taxonomy um, uh, that you can try and catalog the products into? Yes, and we are building our own. So we did a lot of research on existing food taxonomies. However, um, our learnings were that whatever we find on the internet, it's usually like a recipes for dishes, they don't really match uh, the products that are sold in restaurants. So restaurants try to be like a, to have like a fantasy to be very unique. So really, we are building this with content teams from scratch, tailored on the products on the each country, for example, or each market. Yeah. Um, so it's a quite a quite a um, effort, but a, a very very worth. <laughs> okay, it, it, it sounds like, so to speak, um, in the meantime, you will become an expert, really an expert on the world's food culture, mm -hmm. because you have, to, you have to actually look at this. Um, um, so we, we spoke a bit about the data, the, the catalog that merges it, optimizing it, we have an idea. And then it says here, it has here, you know, from unstructured data to knowledge graph. So what's that? Yeah. So basically, as we create all the features, this unique features for each product, we would like to link this information together, right? So we would have, for example, taxonomy or going then to like on building an ontology from all these features and being able to link like all the products that are right beef burger or all the products that are a type of main dish and link all this information together and then being able even to add um, like order uh, order share information like link products based on how often they're combined together um, link products based on main ingredient for example or like a protein ingredients all the chicken products and this will help our search teams or also again recommendation teams to basically get the insight knowledge right also the, the insightful information um, from uh, from this graph so this is, I, I think, and I always, and I have to say, this is a very, you can see it very quickly. Like if you search on Google, just on Google Prata, for example, and Google will give you what type of cuisine is this? How many calories? Recommendation for recipe, uh, the taste, and also like, where can you buy it around you? So <laughs> yeah, my, my dream is to build this for um, Delivery Hero. <laughs> okay. Um <laughs> Understood. Um, so I'm using your app and I'm ordering it. Um, we, you, we started out by speaking about recommendations, helping me to, to understand yeah. what I, else I might be interested in or what I like most. Um, what would be, you know, what you're doing, what would be benefits for me as your, your customer? Yeah, exactly. So I also look through this as I'm, I'm the customer, so as from customer eyes. What I would like to see in uh, this uh, Delivery Hero, like can be Food Panda, can be Pedidosia app, is basically app personalized for my food preferences. So I can also maybe insert that I have lactose intolerance or I want to eat, for example, gluten-free. Um, so, or um, that the app is able to learn and sometimes that I always order uh, foods with mango inside. 
um, basically then when I opened the app, uh, the app or from my previous uh, order history, but also sometimes from learning this like a community information, for example, for the location where I live, maybe uh, for the country where I am, uh, what it should be recommended to me, what kind of dishes during the type of the day um, should be suggested for me so that I'm able to quickly find uh, the dish that I prefer um, based on this recommendation so that I don't spend too much time uh, searching or uh, scrolling around. And another powerful, um, um, to say, uh, outcome that I see is, for example, when I go to another city or when I go to another country, being like if I prefer eating, let's say, meatballs, then I go fly to Germany or I'm now here, I get recommendation fricadelle, for example. <laughs> so uh, that we learn this um, similarity of the local dishes, basically that all this type boulette, meatballs, fricadelle are the same, uh, same dish so that we are able to recommend uh, the same dish in another place or in another country. Okay, thank you for that, Alexander. Um, so th this is all part, so to speak, um, part of a preview of the the use case presentation that you give on the 23rd of June. That is part of this Data Lift Summit, where if you're watching this now and you would like to get some tickets for this to actually meet Alexander in person, that's the point. It's an in-person event that is being held in Berlin over three years, in, uh, three years, three days, and you can join live um, by getting yourself some tickets. Alexander, I actually want to move over a little bit, so to speak. Um, um, I know that you've been with Delivery Hero nearly for four years. You mentioned uh, at the beginning that you were a senior data scientist for quite a while and that also out of your work came the project that you're now leading as a data science manager. So, I mean, that's a career. Um, um, for our audience today, but also for people coming to the Data Lift Summit to meet you, um, they might have you know, they might have questions around for you um, around having this career. So, actually, to contextualize that for you, you mentioned, you know, most people probably know that Delivery Hero is quite a big country that, but quite a big company that has that works in fifty countries. Can you can you say something about the size of the data team at Delivery Hero and what your work looks like? I would say, oh, yeah, exactly. It's quite, quite big. So, for example, I work in the global data um, tribe. It's, I think, around 50 to 70 people. I would say mostly our products that we build are um, delivered not to the customers itself, but to the teams inside Delivery Hero. So we have um, data engineering chapter, data science chapter, um, then data backbone chapter, data quality, and so on. Um, and I have to say the, the work that I'm doing now, like the team where uh, I belong now, the, it's really um, challenging because you don't see, so you measure your success through other teams. So this is also something very important for us that we, whatever data we deliver to the other teams, that we work together with them to um, enable us see the, the success. We talk with a lot of stakeholders, we are connected with a lot of friends like on uh, we have like we, my team uh, continuously is t uh, working together with um, data or BI teams in Peridosia, in Talabat, in eFood, um, also a lot of um, work with um, data teams in APAC. So a lot of connections, a lot of um, sharing of knowledge. Yeah. What I really also like in Delivery Hero is that I'm part of the organization there. We also have a data guild. So basically every twice a month, we uh, have uh, meetings where people around the globe, basically all the brands or the entities share, share what they did, share their project, uh, anything related to data, not only data science. So it's a really, really nice uh, network. Um, Okay, thank you. Thank you for sharing that. And also, um, <laughs> thank you for sharing the insight about actually these various chapters. So there's kind of like this functional differentiation. So people do yeah. specific tasks, but it also all comes together and there's a global global sharing culture. Now, you were a senior data scientist and now you're a data science manager. Um, perhaps I can ask you like this. So what's the difference between being a senior data scientist and being a manager? People management, right? This is something that I was, because I was working at the university before as a teaching assistant, had a bachelor and master's students, I was really also passionate about. I was, it was like a part of me waiting <laughs> to be shown. So um, 
leading the project, if you go to the, the more technical part, uh, we call it individual contributor, um, you will still have the chance to lead a project, to orchestrate and to talk to stakeholders, but you, you would be maybe mentoring some junior data scientists, but you would not be fully responsible for their like grow it, let's say. And what I li really like uh, about the, being a data science manager is also this um, people part where you are working together with your team members towards their personal grow it plan. Um, and long term, like not only like for what are the deliverables for the company or for the project in the next six months, but where do you see yourself in 18 months, in three years, how we can enable this together. So I think, um, yeah, this is something that uh, really, I really enjoy uh, you know, in my new role, in addition okay. to, to the technical <laughs> nice technical projects that we are solving. So, solving. so thank you for that. Actually, you were at the moment focusing, so to speak, on, on the team, the collaboration, the growth, the growth as a team, but also personal growth members. Um, yeah. You mentioned you mentioned now that you also, of course, have, you know, you have projects and deliverables. So that's the other side of it. I guess um, it also means that you have to orchestrate your team towards, you know, exceeding expectations or delivering yeah. on time. Um, how's that part of, of, of being a manager going for you? Yeah, uh, that's, I think, goes in line, in line with this people leadership skills, right? Being able to, to motivate, being able to inspire, but also to give, to, to trust, right? To give um, the team and, or the members um, uh, hands-free to, to delegate and to trust them they will do uh, the task uh, as needed or excel and so on um yeah i think uh, for now <laughs> it's good that the team my team is quite quite new um we are now i think six people two of them just recently joined so uh, i enjoy these phases of, of the team forming and storming where we all show our personalities the ways of working the discussions and so on yeah um and what I like also, we have a product manager in each team in Delivery Hero who is also responsible for organizing the deliverables, the deadlines, and yeah, delivering the product. Okay, thank you for that. I, I have a follow-up question on this, <laughs> I, I, which I'm sure is really interesting for the audience, and you already addressed it. You addressed this, so to speak, this thing about management versus individual contributor, right? And, yes. and yeah. increasing technical proficiency. And you said you have a team of six, and, and <clears throat> of course, a, some of your time, or perhaps even a lot of your time, then goes towards working with people and the people management component of it. So... You know, you, you you made a decision to do this, um, and there's this other r route that perhaps leads to being a principal data scientist, if you wanted to call yeah. somebody that's technically very advanced, but basically just responsible for herself. Um, how do you see a trade-off for yourself? Um, have you reflected this? What does it mean for you? Um, I think I have. So one thing this is really good in delivery here. I think they started doing uh, last year or maybe two years ago there is like a buffer period when a person decides to be a like a, wants to be a data science manager they have like get this associate role for six months or it can be even longer year year and a half when it's like a testing period for both for the okay. employee and for the team or for the manager um, and they they can reflect on that and they can go without problem back to being the uh, individual contributor yeah. So I, I really, really like it. We have a lot of, lot of trainings also on people leadership skills and a lot of uh, resources where we can um, basically learn things and uh, reflect. But I think for me, I would say it was the right, to right choice. So yeah, definitely. I, I really love the, the part of working with people and growing people. Yeah. In addition to, to the <laughs> contribution <laughs> part. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. I also understood from what you just said that you feel really well supported. Um, yeah. um, and I think that's actually that's really cool. This idea that yeah. that you can you can make a move and and um, you ha you have a you have kind of like a grace period in which you can figure out whether this is working and also collect feedback from people around you whether they think it's working for you. Yeah. Um, that, that's actually really cool. 
Okay, um, we've been speaking for quite a while and we, we're kind of coming to, to, to the close of this. Um, so this is to remind the audience that if they want to meet you, they can do so in person on the 23rd of June uh, around this use case presentation and you will be there presumably all day. Um, so there's more time to catch up yeah. with you if somebody is interested. Um, actually, is it likely that your team is hiring over this year at some point? Indeed, yes. The, I mean, we are hiring uh, data scientists. I would have to say we are focusing now on the senior one. Um, and uh, we are hiring data engineers and data analysts. So, yeah. Um, also, nice not roles. only my team, but the whole chapter. <laughs> yeah, lots of lots of job openings in Delivery Hero also. Yeah. Okay, so thank you. Thank you very much for being here, Alexandra. Um, I, I really enjoyed uh, this and, and gaining some insights on your growing expertise around the world's food culture. Um, I hope it's been useful for the audience. So thank you very much. Thank you, Chris. Thank you for organizing and yeah. Uh, we'll see each other in June.